try hybrid cross or it is also known as three characters cross or three factor cross so we have to study the three characters and for these characters three gene pairs are participating means each character is controlled by a separate gene pair we have to study the combined inheritance pattern of three genes and determine the ratio in F2 generation according to the Mendelian laws. So we, here we have parents representing as P1 and parents must be true breed or present in homozygous condition. So we have one parent showing the dominant phenotype and it is crossed with another parent with recessive phenotype. So for uh, three characters, we have three gene pairs and we represent our gene pairs with dominant A, capital A, capital B and capital C letter. Capital A, capital B and capital C is representing the dominant phenotype while small a, small b and small c representing the recessive phenotype. So here we have F1 generation that is present in heterozygous condition and then we have to calculate the types of offsprings in F2 generation. Before that, we have to find out about the gametes formed by F1 generation. So what type of gametes are formed by F1 individual? For that, we have a formula that is the 2 raised to power n. Here, n is representing the number of heterozygous gene pairs in that individual. So, we have three gene pairs in F1 individual and these gene pairs are present in heterozygous condition. So, the formula will be 2 raised to power 3 and its answer is 8. It means we have 8 gametes formed by a single individual of F1 generation. And here is a formula for the number of the gametes. But now we have to calculate the types of gametes. We have to find out about the types of gametes formed by F1 individual. So to find out about the types of the gametes, here we have another pictorial diagram that is representing different types of gametes formed by F1 individual. So here, gamete formation is basically depend upon the law of segregation and law of independent assortment. And law of independent assortment states that each gene pair, for each copy of the gene may uh, combine with another copy of the gene independently. So here you can see here that we have three gene pairs and first gene pair carry dominant A or recessive A. Second gene pair carry dominant B or recessive B, while third gene pair carry dominant C or recessive C copy. So each copy may segregate with another copy of the gene. So we have first gamete that carry dominant A, dominant B and dominant C copy. Another gamete with dominant A, recessive B, dominant C copy. Third gamete with dominant A dominant B and recessive C copy. Then another gamete with the dominant A. Here is a recessive B and recessive C. Here is a mistake. Dominant B is written here, but here is a recessive B. Then we have another copy with the recessive A, dominant B and uh, dominant C. Then recessive A, recessive B and dominant C. Recessive A, dominant B, recessive C. And last gamete is with dom recessive A, B and C. So last gamete carry the recessive alleles from each gene. While the first gamete carry the dominant alleles from each gene. So here we have eight type of gametes formed by a single individual of F1. So we can use a Punnett scale to calculate the uh, number of the offsprings and types of the offsprings in F2 generation. And for the Punnett scale, we have to form eight rows and eight columns because eight gametes are formed by a single individual or single parent of F1. So Punnett scale is very long or you can say lengthy procedure and it is also time taking. So we can use another method to calculate the F2 offsprings. That method is known as poked line method. 
So to use a forked line method, firstly we have to perform monohybrid crosses. Monohybrid cross that is also known as one character cross in which single gene pair is participating. So we have three gene pairs in F1 generation and we have to calculate the individual probabilities of each gene pair. So first gene pair is A that is present in heterozygous condition. So the result is one out of four offspring is with dominant phenotype and homozygous condition. 2 out of 4 in heterozygous condition representing dominant phenotype and 1 out of 4 offsprings are with recessive phenotype. And we can also write it as 3 out of 4 offsprings are representing the dominant phenotype. 3 out of 4. While 1 out of 4 off offsprings are representing the recessive phenotype. So the genotype ratio is 1. 2, 1, while the phenotype ratio is 3, 1. Similarly, we have a second gene pair that is B and uh, both parents are present in heterozygous condition. So, the ratio is 1, 2, 1. That is a genotype ratio in F, uh, F offsprings, while the phenotype ratio is same. 3 out of 4 offsprings are representing the dominant B phenotype, while 1 out of 4 offsprings are representing the recessive B phenotype. And similar results are obtained with third gene pair. So after calculating the mono, uh, results of the monohybrid process, we have individual probabilities for each gene pair. So now we can use the folk line method or folk diagram to calculate the results of the tri-hybrid process. And... Uh, for, to use the folk line method, we have to write the individual probability for each gene pair. So here we have individual probability that is 3 out of 4 offsprings are there with dominant A phenotype. We have to combine this uh, ratio with the result of second gene pair that is 3 out of 4 offsprings are present in the dominant B phenotype while 1 out of 4 are there with recessive B phenotype. Similarly, 3 out of 4 are with recess, uh, dominant C phenotype and 1 out of 4 with recessive C. So here we have to apply the product rule in which we have to multiply the individual probability for each gene pair and find out the combined probabilities for them. So 3 out of 4 dominant A, 3 out of 4 dominant B and 3 out of 4 dominant C. We have to multiply them and the result is 27 out of 64 offsprings are there with dominant A, dominant B and dominant C phenotype means 27 offsprings are representing the dominant phenotype for each trait. Similarly, the next result is 9 out of 64 offsprings are there representing the dominant A phenotype, dominant B phenotype, while recessive C phenotype. Then we have all our results here and you can see that 27 out of 64 are representing the dominant phenotype for each gene or for each trait while 1 out of 64 offsprings are there that are representing the recessive phenotype for each trait. Basically each copy of the gene is representing a trait. So uh, whatever copy of the allele is present or copy of the gene is present that is basically de uh, depicting the traits. So dominant copy of the gene is representing the dominant trait while recessive copy of the gene is representing the recessive trait. So with the help of folk line method, we can easily calculate the ratios and uh, phenotypic ratios for the tri-hybrid process. We can also use the folk line method to calculate the genotypic ratios. And for that purpose, we have to uh, write the individual genotypic ratio for each gene pair. That, for example, we have uh, first ratio that is one out of four offspring representing the homozygous condition for A. So here we have to write one out of four homozygous A. Similarly, we have to combine that with one out of four homozygous B and one out of four homozygous C. So same method will be applied to calculate the genotypic ratios, but we have to write uh, each genotypic ratio and finally we can easily calculate the combined genotypic ratios for the tri-hybrid process. So that's all about the tri-hybrid process.
or the three characters cross.